Introduction to Timberland, the story of William Perry, the man who saved the life of Henry Ford, founder of the Ford Motor Company. A man came up behind Henry Ford with an axe and was going to kill him, and William Perry grabbed the axe out of the man's hand, and then Mr. Ford said, You have a job with me for life, and he did, until the day he died. This is an excerpt from an interview of Irene Johnson, neighbor of William and Melinda Perry. The interview was conducted by Terry Hoover, archivist for the Henry Ford Museum in Greenfield Village. This interview, along with an interview of my father, Frank Walls, that I did in 1987 during my sabbatical from the Greater Essex County District School Board, are part of the reasons I wrote this book. Timberland is dedicated to my wife, Connie who not only encouraged me to write this book, but let me read, then reread the manuscript so many times it became her bedtime story. Permission was given by the Henry Ford Museum to reprint the following story that was written by Cynthia Reed Miller, curator of photography and prints for the Henry Ford Museum in Greenfield Village. This story was written for the September 2004 pick of the month. The title of the story is William Perry, the first African American hired by the Ford Motor Company. In February 1914, William Perry went to the Ford Motor Company automobile plant in Highland Park, Michigan. The 61-year-old African American bricklayer had developed a heart condition and could no longer continue working at his trade. In an era before Social Security and retirement plans, Perry needed a job to support himself and his family. When Perry arrived at the Highland Park plant, he asked to speak to Henry Ford. This was not the first time that William Perry and the famous industrialist had met. Many years before, during the winter of 1888-89, to Henry Ford had hired Perry to help him cut and saw wood. Henry Ford, newly married and living on timberland given to him by his father in rural Dearborn Township, Michigan, was making a living selling lumber. To cut down the trees, Ford and Perry used a crosscut saw, a long blade with handles at both ends that took two people to operate. Henry Ford remembered William Perry as a man who worked hard and did his job well. They developed a mutual respect. In 1891, Henry Ford and his wife Clara moved to Detroit where Henry began working as an engineer at the Edison Illuminating Company. William Perry became a bricklayer and by 1904 had purchased a home for his family on Pearl Street in southwest Detroit. When his health made it impossible to continue his work as a bricklayer, William Perry remembered having worked for Henry Ford and thought him an honest man. So Perry went to the administration offices at Ford Motor Company's Highland Park plant to speak with him. Henry Ford indeed remembered Perry, and after talking with him, gave him a tour of the machinery in the power plant. Ford then informed the powerhouse superintendent that Perry would be working there and to see to it that he's comfortable. A handwritten note on Perry's employment application stated, Mr. H. Ford is interested in this party. William Perry became the first African-American employee at Ford Motor Company. He remained on the payroll until his death at the age of 87 on October 9, 1940. The Perrys were the only African-American family living on Pearl Street in Detroit, and the neighbors were aware of his connection to Henry Ford. When William Perry died, Henry Ford visited Perry's widow at the family home. It was tradition for the deceased to be laid out at home and for mourners to come by and to pay their respects. Ford's visit caused much excitement in the neighborhood, but to no surprise. William Perry's friendship had a significant influence on Henry Ford. In later years, Henry used the metaphor of sharing a crosscut saw to explain his belief that African Americans and whites should work together with the colored man sawing at one end of the log and the white man at the other. At the time that Ford hired Perry at Ford Motor Company, few industries would employ skilled and semi-skilled African Americans. The only industrial jobs open to African Americans were those that whites refused. 
These jobs were usually dirty, hot, and strenuous. Beginning in the mid-1910s, Ford Motor Company hired increasing numbers of African-American workers. They held jobs in virtually all non-salary job categories and earned the same pay as white workers. Eventually, African-Americans even held supervisory and white-collar positions. A 1919 Ford Motor Company policy statement expressed the views of Henry Ford and his son Etzel on employment. We have learned to appreciate men as men and to forget everything else outside of human qualities and energy. For the most part, Ford Motor Company practice followed this philosophy. By 1926, over 10,000 African Americans worked for the Ford Motor Company, more than half of all African Americans employed in the automobile manufacturing industry at that time. I was inspired to write this book because the story of William Perry's life has never been told. I felt it was important to tell others how the relationship of these two men affected many others in a positive way and changed the course of history. The book is not a commentary about either man's politics or personal beliefs, but rather about William Perry and how during his life he met and became a friend of Henry Ford. The history these two men created makes me especially proud because William Perry is my great uncle. He is the brother of my father's mother, Parthena Perry Walls. I'm a retired high school teacher from the Greater Essex County District School Board in Windsor, Ontario, Canada. In 1987, I was granted a sabbatical from the school board to research family history. On Thursday, January 15, 1987, my nephew, Dr. Brian Walls, and I interviewed my father about our Uncle William Perry's life story. Brian is the author of the book, The Road That Led to Somewhere, a true story of my paternal great-grandparents, John Freeman and Jane King Walls, who came to Canada on the Underground Railroad in 1846 from North Carolina. In the interview, my dad said his mother, Parthena, Uncle Will and their brothers and sisters Joseph, Jim, Margaret, and Sarah were born in the Elmstead Pew Settlement just outside of Windsor, Ontario, Canada. When he was young, William Perry attended a one-room schoolhouse just like Henry Ford. I also went to a one-room school, SS No. 9 in Lakeshore Township, formerly Maidstone Township in Essex, Ontario. This school, along with several others, was located in the Elmstead Pews community where William Perry was raised. The Elmstead Pew Settlement School in my book Timberland symbolizes all of these one-room schoolhouses. The Perrys were a family of farmers, but Uncle Will left home when he was young. In 1888, he worked with Henry Ford on his Timberland, then later he became a master bricklayer, and finally he worked at the Ford Motor Company. My father, his brother Hardy, and other family members became employees of Ford's because of the friendship of Henry Ford and Will Perry. My father and Mrs. Irene Johnson, the neighbor who donated the photograph of Perry to the Henry Ford Museum, said they didn't know the exact circumstances that led to Uncle Will saving Henry Ford's life when he was attacked by a man with an axe. There were also some years that Dad didn't know what Uncle Will did. So for those lost years, I felt since he was part of the golden age of the automobile, it would be interesting and fun to have him be a part of the golden age of railroads and even sail around the world on a clipper ship. None of this, however, takes away from the true friendship that developed between these two men from different backgrounds. So I hope you enjoyed Timberland, my story of William Perry, the man who saved the life of Henry Ford, founder of the Ford Motor Company. Thank you.